ready or not. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here. This is our second uh, ready or not event. Um, we're really happy to be back at the Holt, uh, who are an amazing venue. They've uh, supported loads in the run up to this. Uh, this time we're going to be uh, raising money for Say It, which is a Sheffield charity that supports LGBT uh, young people. So give it up for Say It as well. The reason we're going to tonight is to see uh, eight superb comedians come and take to the stage to tell you funny things and jokes and all the like. So, um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm one of the founding members of Bar Side Up. Um, contrary to what my top says, I do not accept the name Nicky. This is just a support of capitalism. <laughs> I always got by Michael because, uh, well, my uncle is called uh, Mike, and then my stepdad is called Mick. My sister is Michaela, which is just Michael with an A on the end, and my mum. You have no originality. <laughs> and she had the nerve to go, no, you're not named after anybody else. Your name is completely original. Like, it's a biblical name! It's an original name. You've been called Michael for thousands of years. You're lying, you lying. Jokes, <laughs> <laughs> I love Janice. Everybody loves Janice. Everybody gets really confused because I say Janice a lot when I drop things or I trip over things. But I'm literally just quoting that video about fat kids falling out of a roller coaster. Like, Janice! Janice, I'm falling! <laughs> became part of my vocabulary, so now literally, I do anything wrong, drop the tiny thing, I'm like, Janet! <laughs> it really freaks my mum out when we're at home just quiet, and suddenly you just hear Janet's being shouted from somewhere. <laughs> um, so uh, I recently started a new job, uh, which was really, really fun, apart from the fact that I kind of had to, like, uh, come out all over again. Not as gay, everybody knows that. <laughs> but, Kind of like the first few days, week or so, I kind of had to like hide the fact that I'm a little bit weird. Like someone would be like casually talking about Harry Potter. I'm like, really? Do you want to know the most inane, minute details that I can tell you? The drop of a hat. No, no, you don't. You don't want to talk about the like really deep seated meaning of what Hogwarts has written. Oh, you don't even know what Hogwarts has written. Oh yeah, we can totally be friends. So, um, really kind of trying to keep that to myself. Um, I did drop the ball though. Uh, we were planning certain marketing content, and one of the things was for the 3rd of October. I was like, on October 3rd, he has me by day off. <laughs> Thank you, you get it. <laughs> I was in a team meeting of like six other people, and I was like, what? It's like, mean girls. You know, mean girls. Suddenly felt very, very old, because I'm the oldest on my team, and I'm like, you're young, you should all know mean girls. Um, and then I kind of had to tell them that, uh, okay, I'm not a diehard fan. I have watched it five times in a 24 hour period. <laughs> <laughs> but I stand by that decision. We watched it during pre drinks. Then we watched it when we came in at 2 in the morning. Then we watched it when we woke up at 8 a.m. Then we left it on so long that the menu just hit play again. <laughs> and in our hungover state, we just watched it again. Then we went to spoons. The, the go-to choice. And then we came back and we couldn't be bothered to change the DVD, so we just watched it again. And, and whilst I now can quote that movie to perfection, a skill that is on my CV, but they clearly have loads on their me. But um, it's, uh, I stand by the choice to watch uh, Mean Girls five times in 24 hours, and I recommend it if you've got the free time, definitely. Um, but in terms of like coming out all over again, it, it, it is a bit weird because coming out is so much easier now. For big enough for LGBTQ people in the hands, much more than the ten percent. Yeah, that's good. Um, but coming out is so much easier now. You hear these stories about young people who are much younger in school having their confidence to be like, yeah, of course I am, and everyone in their life accepts them. Which is great. And a friend actually said to me recently that um, it's not an issue now. But lots of people in this community, and, and he actually compared it to um, coming out and telling people that he has dyslexia. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really insane. <laughs> <laughs> no one is homeless because they're dyslexic. Um, and there aren't religious fanatics shouting, it's Adam and Eve, not Adma and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a, a struggle that they don't really get, although I will give it to you. Um, being dyslexic can stop you from getting a job, and it can lead to awkward conversations when your parents find your search history. 
So, <laughs> 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 so um, enough from me. Uh, we're going to start here from the actual field comedians that we have for you tonight. Um, first up, oh, okay. Uh, first up, we've got a other girl who is from the northeast who will definitely not tell you many, many stories about being from the northeast. You won't even know that she is joy. Uh, it's the, her first time performing comedy with Butter Side Up. Please welcome to the stage, Hannah.
maybe it's all of it has more of Dora than I am. I was like, hey man, what are you going to do with your money? I said it that sweetly thinking like, I'd get out of the overdraft. <laughs> what are you going to do? The grand dream that we've now had for our wins. Like the, the want, the need. Oh, I need to get that one. <laughs> Flip flop 
I've waited an extra 45 fucking minutes because it's always delayed. And I finally get onto the plane and I'm in the middle seat again. Only this time, sitting next to someone called Keith. <laughs>
That was me pretending to lick my ankle very violently. <laughs> so I did that because that's a normal reaction to being complimented by the person you love. You know, I couldn't just be sexy or flirty or say something nice back. I'd say thank you at the very least. Sexual repression. <laughs> yeah, so that's my my problem. Um, but you know, I thought, come on, kid, you're a grown up. You're a grown ass woman. You've got to own it. You've got to own your sexuality. So I thought, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out tonight. I'm gonna put on my best garment. And I'm gonna feel confident. So I put on these lovely uh, leopard print trousers or leggings or whatever. A little bit out there to what I normally go for, and they, they do sort of make me look like I'm off to jazzercise after this. <laughs> you know, I do. You know that story. Um, but I thought I'm gonna put them on. But I did hesitate because I thought, hmm, leopard print. Hmm, yeah, that's a bad idea. I don't want to make the audience feel uncomfortable with my overwhelming sexual appeal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you didn't know, if a girl wears leopard print, she's basically automatically a prostitute. You know, but it's like if a girl wears leopard print, she's automatically a slut. You might just be thinking, okay, surely it's just a piece of fabric. But you'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. You know, if you've got tits, and you wear a leopard print, you're automatically a slut. So, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm obviously dumb. And I really think that, you know, all of these prejudices against what women wear and things are so ridiculous. You know, leopard print, wearing short skirts and low cut tops, made from a horn that you have sex and a skin behind our skirt. It's just not true, it only happens once, okay? So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. So, I wore my leopard print trousers anyway, it's an absolute hole. No, I wore them anyway because I thought, it's ridiculous, we've got to get over this. And I'm trying to really, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to be more conscious about where these views come from and these opinions come from and why they're still in, you know, our narrative of society and things. And you know, if you look back at the Bible, yeah, I'm going there. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that cool, hipster, atheist thing of signing the Bible off. I'm not going to do that. Because I think if you believe in something and you're not harming anyone else, then that's fine. But the certain interpretations of it that really want me. And so, if, you know, you look back into basically the really misogynist views about the Bible come back from in the Middle Ages. There was like a group of men who had really sexist views and just wrote that women were villains and evil and evil temptresses, and that's where it's come from, all of these views. So, pitch this in the Middle Ages, you know, these Middle Ages men. And they're sitting there and they're, what was in the Middle Ages? Did they have stone houses? Was stone in the Middle Ages there? I don't know. And they're sitting there around their round tables, you know, big round tables to accommodate for that man's birthday. <laughs> so they're sitting around, sitting around the round tables, and they're reading the Bible. And they get to the story of David and Bathsheba. I don't know if you've heard of that story before, some of you might have. Uh, just to fill you in, case you it's about um, the lady Bathsheba, who, she has a bath on a roof, as a you. <laughs> and David spots her and he's like, ooh, <laughs> I love my soul but a bit of that. <laughs> so, you know, it's the one of the song of Shrek, you know, we saw her bathing on the roof, you know, Hallelujah, otherwise known as the Lenny Poe song, but the song of Shrek, the song of Shrek. <laughs> 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 uh, cultural highlights of my life. <laughs> right. um, so, yeah, so he sees that, he sees her having a bath, and basically he shouts her. And that's seen as a sin because, you know, thou shalt shag thy neighbor's wife. I think that's how a man goes. I think that's how a man goes. And you know, and that's seen as a sin. And these middle ages men, they, they read this story and they go, hmm, hmm. And they're sitting there, do you know what it's like? They're sitting there, <laughs> you know, with their jousting sticks, just like, ooh, this is a phallic symbol of my undeserving power and privilege and my massive cop. <laughs> Definitely bash her with fault that. What do you mean? Well, she was having a bath. She shouldn't have been having a bath. She was just tempting him. What was he to do? Well, she might have wanted to clean herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she was naked. That's how you properly clean yourself? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, she got her tits and her money out. What was David to do? 
what was David to do? <laughs> no, it's as if they're making out that she's sitting there in the bath, like, badge fully on display, I'm like, David, why don't you come fuck me, you little bitch? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she probably wasn't actually doing that. You know, in reality, she was probably just trying to hold up. She was probably just trying to get ready to go meet her friends, go to work, go to an appointment, you know. And in reality, it was just David who was a little bit of a sex pest, a little bit positive, not gonna lie. No, she's probably actually just there. Hey, you! You over there! Are you spying on me? Yes, I'm talking to you over there. You with the binoculars. <laughs> yes, who else am I talking to? You with the ladder. I had to help come up to the roof to get away from all you peeping toms down there. Now you've brought a flaming ladder. I can't believe it. People in these biblical times. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, this is old testament. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my Moses. laughs> He's 
a national treasure. <laughs> And this actually shows the education we need because once I told somebody I was from Cardiff and she was like, so what is Ireland like? <laughs> 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 so I worry about it. I think about her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I'm like, I come from the city. There's really, there's not sheep there. There's really no sheep there. People think that sheep are just frolicking <laughs> in my backyard. <laughs>
63. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there are, you know, there's, there's differences. And, uh, you know, speaking of the news, inevitable Brexit. Oh. <laughs> we don't love a bit of Brexit. Oh. Or breakfast, as it was once referred to, which I much prefer, we just not stick to breakfast, please. <laughs> But um, there was a recent article, and I'm pretty sure none of you will have read it because it was to do with Wales and who the fuck cares. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out that English people living in Wales swung the vote towards Brexit in Wales. So, good news, we can blame you! <laughs> I knew it wasn't us! <laughs> Irish would be like, oh, what did you do, stupid twat? <laughs> 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 guys, we do like to blame the English stuff. You know, it's like Brexit. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> Brexit. The English. Failing economy. The English. You've lost your socks. Definitely the English. <laughs> Probably that one you know who lives down the road. <laughs> I'm sure I'll meet one one day. <laughs> but generally, we don't really get so much of the hype. It's like, Boris Johnson lies to a whole country. Eh, you know, he did what he had to do. Lies to the Queen, I'm gonna fuck him up! <laughs> I'm gonna fuck him up right now! Don't do that to Bess! Alright? Alright! As if she's not gonna just turn to dust in a matter of days. <laughs> she's so Some point. 
But there's never really a situation when it comes up that is absolutely essential. You mentioned the fact you're autistic. So you're not good at looking people in the eye, for example. It's not even like there's this Medusa walking down the street and everyone's going, oh Jesus, if you look her in the eye, she'll turn you to stone. And you're like, lads, got this. <laughs> 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 Spectrum, come on, <laughs> <laughs> It's a spectrum. There's only apparently two ends to it. What's that about? You're about this. And I'm, I'm, I'm my function, which means they didn't notice it until I was old enough. Basically, they didn't notice I was weird until it was too late. <laughs> we can all relate. Every single one of us. <laughs> So we had a, I have some amazing questions when I tell people normally though, because like I say, like they say, oh yeah, I've got Asperger's. And they go, oh, you feel emotions then? Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. Oh, I've got uh, uh, my mum's friend's son. Oh, yeah. he's got autism. All he does is sit in front of the Disney Channel all day in his wheelchair. Do you do that? <laughs> Here in top set maths, <laughs> telling you how to solve algebra. <laughs> you know what? I don't do that. Well, that's only because I've only got a food, you know. Sorry, <laughs> but I can deal with it. I can deal with it. It's fine. Like, and I've got all the social situations nailed down. I have this big old grid in my head, I like to imagine. Big old thing in my head where I just I put every possible solution to every possible situation. You know a person, you learn more about them, you get to know what they're like, and you just you start to build this greed in your head of what they're saying to you and whether they're taking the piss or not. Basically. <laughs> but, uh, so this is fine for social situations. I've got it nailed after 19 years. But intimate situations are not really fucked. <laughs> And I'll tell you about this one particular time that was particularly bad for all involved. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, all good stories start in a game club at about four in the morning, right? And I'm talking to this girl, or trying to talk to this girl, I don't think it's going that well. Mainly because I've got this mate who's trying to wingman me. And she's been trying to wingman me all night, except she's fucking a ham. So at this point, it's got to me talking to the girl. Hey, well, yeah, you should walk up and go. Hey, Matt's great! God, isn't Matt great? You're great, Matt. <laughs> walk off. <laughs> so I'm still there. Yes. Maybe. But anyhow, somehow, I'm not sure how this is going, but I'm with this girl and a mate. And I know a mate, her mate is also my mate. So I'm thinking this might be alright. Uh, and we decide to go to McDonald's. It's like 6 in the morning at this point. We spend a good hour in McDonald's. We're just chatting. I'm like, that looks like a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to laugh. <laughs> um, and then uh, she's kind of like, hey, let's go back. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm heading in the same direction. And uh, we walked, and I'm like, oh, this is good. They're not told me to fuck off yet. We're at about seven in the morning. The sun's not even coming. Up. It's up. It's around. It's like a lot of People are going to work. <laughs> and uh, and we kind of get to the accommodation, and they buzz themselves in. They get on to fucking go going, going upstairs. And upstairs, and we get to the flat. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is new. <laughs> and then uh, her mate, who's my mate, disappears into her room. And I'm like, fuck it, I learned from this point on. It's no radio contact. I'm not sure what to do. And she's like, hey, the room's there. And I'm like, oh, yes. So we both walk in. And she's like, I'm gonna get into the hours. Put the pajamas on, go to the bathroom. She goes to the other 
Now I'm still in her bed in the sunshine. Jesus fucking Christ. I've never made it this far before. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't, 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 it didn't,
Sorry. 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 Like, seriously, it's a minefield of dating apps. When you're not, like, do 
dealing with heterosexuals and those BDSM people and you know people who fuck books. <laughs> like so many people are just like, oh yeah, I just want someone who's like tainted by the past. You're asking a bit much. We're all tainted by the past. Like I still can't get over the fact that they replaced. Cat Dealey with Tess Daly on SMTV Live. <laughs> 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 SMTV Live, Anderson, yeah. Donkey Donkey, yeah. Oh, this is shit. <laughs> they replaced Cat Dealey with Tess Daly, and my six year old heart couldn't take it. My 26 year old heart can't take it. Like, I watch Strictly every week, and I'm just like, should be Cat Dealey up there. Like, it makes it so hard. Like, you, you better laugh, because I'm missing Strictly for this. I'm missing Alice <laughs> being dragged around the dance floor. You know, they're obviously not coming in for my intelligence and my humor, so I need to like work with something. But anyway, recently I changed my bio just to have like all my personality type on there. Uh, this is I love doing personality business, but like someone else can tell me who I am. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, so it's like Ella, 26. I got Leo Sun, Virgo Rising, INFP, Hufflepuff. Um, I love my rules. Quality time and words of affirmation. Any of round four, all that good shit. So I match with this guy, and he's like an American data science, data science, data scientist, who recently moved to London, and he said he wanted to make friends. And his first, his opening line to me was, "Hey Ella, <clears throat> I'm going to get my phone out because I don't want to forget the exact words this person said to me." <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish you said I'm sorry. <laughs> I know this is literally the worst possible thing to start talking about, so sorry in advance. But not just my own face. <laughs> oh, is it that one that looks like... You know it, Becky! <laughs> Now, unlike a lot of women on America's Next Top Model, Benz was not here to make friends. Yeah, the name was Benz, as in rhymes with my pets. <laughs> so we know who the villain in the story is. So uh, I can tell this guy, wow, I thought you were here to make friends. And he tells me, yes, I'm aware of that. Another obnoxious smiley in face, as if it's not a good one. But my mum's an astrologist, among other pseudo-scientific esoteric stuff, which might explain why I grew up to be this hyper-rational monster that I am, where I cannot bear the thought of other people making decisions based on astrology and stuff. Plus, I'm a Myers-Briggs ENTP, which is the debater archetype. Now, I'm just going to stop our friend Benzo here, because if you hate, you know, pseudo-scientific stuff like astrology, you probably shouldn't say you hate it because you're a Myers-Briggs ENTP. For those of you who aren't familiar, Myers-Briggs is like these 16 personality archetypes which we all supposedly fit into. Do you know what that is? A pseudoscience! <laughs> you can't really say that you hate pseudoscience because of a certain pseudoscience. It just really, really makes it, it's a moot point, which is an argument point, which we've all been using that word wrong, but you get it, it's colloquial. <laughs> monster and he's like, no, you're twisting my words around, you're twisting my words around. Like, Dude, scroll up. You literally said that you are rational because your mother who believes in astrology is irrational. And he said, oh, I stand by that. I stand by that because my mother and what she does is creating a negative social impact on the world. A negative social impact because she likes astrology. Like, imagine if you're like, oh, I'm here to make friends. Um, oh, excuse me, I see you're wearing some blue shoes. Um, why, why, do you, why are you wearing blue shoes? Like, I don't know, you think that, you think that's 
fashionable? Do you think, oh, I, I see that suede as well. Like, hey, yeah, very illness for you. Um, <laughs> you're wearing some blue, you know my brother used to wear blue suede shoes. And she used to kick me off the ass every day for like up until I was 18 and moved. Yeah, are you think blue shoes are just like good? Do you like blue shoes? Are you a bitch? Are you a bitch like my mother who kicked me every day with those blue shoes? Are you, are you a bitch? Are you a bitch like my mother because you wear them? Imagine, that's how you met people. That's how you met people. That's what he was doing with astrology. Like, you don't have to believe in astrology. I'm not telling you to believe in astrology. I'm just saying, I like memes, okay? <laughs> Diabetes. No, no, I 
show. Uh, <laughs> Oh, 
I knew it it's in your room, yeah, but he's waiting me. <laughs> but essentially, we're getting charged 50 quid a check in. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing it digital now. He's got one of them 21st century dads. Yeah. Going to like, hit their fingers and scroll through their eyes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I used to put a mobile phone shop in there for six years and I had to quit because it just got too much for me. I couldn't stand it anymore. It was horrible. I mean, that's like, the people just yeah. walk into the shop and technology would like, turn the world, like, turn the world to patch. It's absolutely horrible. And I was intended to sell these products, like, which were intended to connect people. And they, and they just don't for me. They don't connect people. They just alienate everyone. You used to be this old lady, right? You used to come in. You used to this old lady. She didn't even have a problem with the phone. She should come in right so she could have a chat. <laughs> I know the thing. <laughs> and I used to think, what can I do? And I'd said to her, Nan, you can't keep bothering me at work. Like, I know I'm not seeing you on TV this morning. Right, I'll come to yours next week. Just promise you won't steal steam sausage in the tea again. <laughs> it's like, it's so steam. And then she texted me, she said, uh, Louis, I've got a new smart TV. Oh, that's my money. Yeah, I think my wife on it. So it's all. Yeah. And she said, Louis, we come ready, no, just set it up. So I texted her back, yes. Right. Came up on my screen and she read it straight away. Pulls her right around. She's got her writers, so she can't be there. Oh, it's very sad. Anyway, I bought my right to her, I said, box all the box, like all six play. Bought to my sister, bought everything, not ours. And then. Uh, <laughs> And then I approached the door, and then I just did this, and I just did Netflix! Netflix! Oh, fuck it. Something's not right in here, so I rushed inside, and the team in hand stood in front of the TV, panting. What's going on? She said, well, plug in shots then. But once I've turned it on, I should start screaming Netflix. I said, no, I'm screaming. She said, Steve, I said, no, man. Streaming, what's your obsession with Steve? I said, stream. She said, I said, I said why would it be Steve? She said, why would it be stream? <laughs> Back in my day, stream was an artificial water that constructed into a line of passage of boats or ships. So I said to her, right, you can't, you can't watch Netflix because you can watch Wi Fi. She said, Wi Fi. I said, Yeah, Wi Fi. She said, What channel is that on? I said, I said No, man, you need internet. She said, You've bloody no chance. I'm not getting bloody direct evidence again. You've got no chance. So I said, Okay, so I talked to the connected it to next door's Wi Fi. <laughs> I guess I saw his password. It was named his ex wife, Geraldine. It didn't work at first, and then I remember the old bollocker, so I tried it in capsule. <laughs> so I was like, right, I mean, I'm a buzzing, she was buzzing, where does she roll on tap on Netflix? She was buzzing live. I grew up funny games until Tony tried to like, sign up to stream live on to on television and came up on my hands a bit of a I'm not absolutely neither. I walked up to a thousand texts off my hand, how can I do this? I thought, that looks disgusting. <laughs> What's it much for? I went around to Tony the next day, told him to put around the control of the It was horrible. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> And I said to my dad, I said, Nan's watching porn. Again. <laughs> and he just said, welcome to the real world. No, but like I said, what was that? Oh yeah, just, uh, just this is my sixth lad's holiday now. It's not all around. Just, it's my sixth lad's holiday now. I don't have a question whether or not we can call it an holiday. Right. The definition, I checked it, I checked it out. The definition of a holiday is an extended period of leisure. Of recreation. What can I say? I live in the back to it, so it's ours. I said, I'm going to the first one. I actually agree to like it. Like, you've got to go to your own old street. It's access to running water. That's better than most walking women. It's actually just like having a normal room, except every couple of hours, someone can take a shit in it. It's similar to most walking women. Like, that's the way it works. You may get to problems before you even get to your hotel on like a lot holiday. Like any any sort of holiday we we group makes like we had a 5am flight, so that means you've got to go on the airbnb makes it like 2 a.m. And then from that point until you touch back in the UK, you're forced to drink alcohol. Why would I want to drink alcohol at 2 a.m. before a flight? 
Just saw it on the corner. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. But, 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 but like, there's no logic to that. There's no logic at all in one of these lines. But logic just seems to get taken off your customs head when you run off. It's weird, like, you walk through to customs, you get started. Hey, excuse me, sorry. You're trying to swallow some sort of fucking logic through. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you wouldn't mind a jail of fucking luggage, would you? It's not just getting aggressive. And the world's checking me like, like me, I'm going to be drawing battles, like, clocking, and all over. Uh, Definitely. Check his arse! <laughs> Check his arse! And then, well, you know, like, Lucy's got London customs. That, that's the rumour. Like, Lucy's got London customs. Like, that's good stuff. Look over to my mate, he's been stopped. She always has a whole mate who's trying to pack out the body shop into a small receiver. <laughs> You know what I mean? I look at what it's like sacrificing so we can get through customs. He chooses something. Uh, like I said, no logic. I'm going to pick the roof. Mum's a roof, when it comes to beauty protection. Yeah, I used to go on the roof with mum and dad and two sisters. I used to walk up at five o'clock in the morning. Not for a good Sunday today. My dad had walked up at four o'clock. Um, yeah, I'd be up at five o'clock and my mum would be still over me in overalls. Ready for the five first time to go to the office look. <laughs> Seriously, she, she got a level 3 painting and decorating, and I thought that's not she went to go on. It made sense because she's very black, pouring something into a paint tray and flying for the bowl. Do you know what I mean? I pulled off the court hour after hour until about 18 a.m. and she'd pick all the bushes sheets up. And then uh, she'd be like, right, I'm going to the pool now. Just, like, don't get that. Because it needs soap. I haven't been in this one whole series because it's still not, it's still not so tinted for that job. Anyway, yeah, we go down to the pool, look at all the kids like splashing about at the time of the lapis. Me and my sister were sat on the parasol looking like we had a vendetta against Vitamin D. <laughs> 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 the parents were walking past that line and the kids were great. And I had already been over, like three all inclusive pints deep. Or he could have been so fucking like crisp and dry. You know what I mean? <laughs> I burnt like, turn it into a blister. No matter who burnt that gets, you might say to me, Dad, you look so like, and you get with another life, that's it. You're like, ah, it's a breath, that's it. That's it. Alright, that's it. I don't think it will, but all the time. Maybe we'll show it from the balcony. It's lying! Fucking shit. But yeah, it was, it, it was, it was the best. My like, mum and dad, believe it or not, are all, they're on holiday at home with mum and dad. I don't want on holiday with mum and dad anymore. Um, <laughs> Um, not that I don't want to, it's just oh, someone has to look after the flowers. So I, uh, I started making boots that fell on my eye. He's having absolutely no idea. 
He said, I heard you got both the custard. <laughs> I said, no, I never. <laughs> I got both the custard. How many of these rings in the bowl? <laughs> So, I was in this situation, I think it was called Keith. <laughs> <laughs> in, these, in these situations, you've, got to, you've just, got to, just got to like go with your gut, do what you do your own thing, try to be technique So, I'll try technique number one, which is what you do in these situations when you're stuck in a flat by yourself. Uh, you do the full frontal relax, technique number one, so this is where you just go ahead and shoot your I'll just use my, uh, I'll just use my chest as a girl. I'll we'll just try, try this out. Um, you do about, you do about 10, 15 minutes, and then you know what, this will work. <laughs> Five minutes later, that just popped on. So you're back to this. And then the downside of this technique is that if you fall asleep too soon, you wake up and you're just stuck. You're just walking around your you're looking dead depressed. People are saying, what's up with your mate? They're like, you've got bummed at Come on, let's do more, let's do more. Like, you're driving down the street, you can't, you can't lift up your head. So, like, come on, get to straw, like, you can't lift it back. I'm like, nice one, we'll move on. So, you go to technique number two, head down, it's not good enough. Let's just do the flip reverse, let's bang it back, whack. <laughs> and you think, you know what, this isn't too bad. And then, the problem with this one is after about 10, 15 minutes, you jog it to me, so. <laughs> And before you know it, you've got your mate's cock in your mouth. <laughs> and then you're like, it's poison for you, there's a feed as well. It's just that like, it's not a bad thing. I like that thing, but. So let me move on again. And I just got the old shoulder roll, but like, it's not the most comfortable. Let me do that, whack, and then it's fine. And I'm falling asleep, and I get to sleep, and about 10 15 minutes in, I get a tap on my shoulder, bam bam. Earl says, she's like this, would you like any Pringles? <laughs> She said, buy a pound. I said, I could have picked my own seat for four. It's expensive, isn't it? Look at us. Anyway, we ended up going to where we were going. It was paying for us, so obviously, salt and sex, sand, siestas. None of that happened. It's just drink what you can, throw what you can, find the cheapest fry, and then like, end back up. It's like, that's what happens, that's what happens. And then uh, I had a really good time, and then uh, I got home, and then uh, I got into my dad's house. And I'm all like this, you're like, is everything okay, son? He's like, yeah. Good, sir. Good old day, yeah. He's like, yeah, sir, sir, cheers, sir. She's like, yeah. She's like, well, I've been on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you've been born in custody. <laughs> Oh, you know, what have you even said to something like that? And I'm like panicking and like shit myself. And then before I even respond, my dad puts in, puts his arm around your shoulder and says, Welcome to the ring. <laughs>